Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on tissues. Now, of course, when we say tissues, we're not talking about <laughs> blowing your nose kind of tissues. We're talking about a bunch of cells together with some common purpose, some some functional goal in terms of what they're doing for your body. So it is cells organized into groups for a specific set of functions or purposes. Sometimes it's just one purpose. A lot of times it's many. Epithelial tissue is the first one we're going to talk about. And epithelium, that's the other way to put it, is always cells that are on the outermost part, the most superficial layer of an organ, or the innermost part, uh, the deepest parts of an organ. Uh, so if they're in the innermost parts, that organ has some kind of passageway or, or hollow area. It's called a lumen. And the cells on the innermost part, those epithelial cells, are probably helping to move something through, absorbing chemicals, secreting chemicals. It could be a variety of things. So epithelium, very plentiful in your body, extremely important. Connective tissue, the most abundant tissue in your body, because uh, connective tissue is a lot of different kinds of cells functioning together. Uh, it really does connect your body parts to each other uh, and help bind organs to neighboring tissues. Muscle tissue and neural tissue are technically a type of connective tissue, uh, but these are major tissues in the human body. You're going to find muscle tissue all throughout the body, uh, even in parts where you don't realize it's there, because some of your muscles are doing involuntary actions that you don't directly control consciously. Um, so muscles uh, are actually in your dermis. You actually have muscles in your skin that you don't consciously move, but they do contract and relax uh, without you realizing it. Neural tissue, also all throughout the body. It's not just the brain, not just the spinal cord. Uh, we're talking every single nerve, all the neurons, um, billions and billions of cells. Histology, very important kind of branch or study related to anatomy and physiology. That's the study of tissues. And to be more specific, it's, it's really looking up close at a tissue to see what the cells look like and how they're oriented related to each other. So that's why it's typically with a microscope that you're going to be looking at some kind of histological picture. And actually later on in this lesson, I will show you a histology slide. So the first kind of uh, tissue we're going to talk about is epithelial tissue, also called epithelium. The purpose of epithelium is to cover every external and internal surface of the body, not just on the outside, but internal organs as well. These epithelial tissues are always attached to a basal lamina, uh, also known as a basement membrane. That's the other kind of synonym for this term. Here's what's meant by that. Um, you're going to see on pictures I'm going to either draw for you or, or have displayed on the slide later on in this lesson that it's always cells bound to what looks like just a line. Looks like a, kind of like cement, like a cement line that the cells are attached to and anchored to. That basement membrane or uh, basal lamina isn't actually made of cells. Uh, it's kind of like, think of it as an organic protein glue uh, that's anchoring all those uh, cells to that surface. And then that basement membrane is connected to whatever tissue is immediately uh, below it or deep to it. Uh, so basement membrane you're going to find associated with every epithelium. Also, epithelium is avascular. It gets nutrients and gases from diffusion and or osmosis. So what does avascular mean specifically? Um, vascular, let's take the cardiovascular system, always has to do with transporting fluids. So for instance, a vascular plant like a tree is called that because the tree is able to suck water up and, and get it up through osmosis to the tippy tops of its leaves. That's a vascular uh, plant. We are vascular because we're able to move fluids against gravity all throughout our body. But this specific tissue is avascular because when you look at blood vessels and the transport of fluids related to this, the blood vessels don't actually go right up into it. Um, so you're not seeing capillaries, those tiny blood vessels of your body, feeding this directly with oxygen and nutrients. The oxygen and nutrients, the, the gases that are going to be given to these tissues, get there from whatever tissue is right next to it. So it's diffusion and osmosis that's getting the nutrients and gases to the epithelial tissues. And because we're talking about parts that are on the very outside of your body, on the passageways that, that you're swallowing stuff into or, or inhaling uh, air into, 
They're consistently damaged by a wide variety of environmental factors, regenerated with stem cells. You're getting pretty much constant regeneration of these epithelial tissues, depending on where they are in the body. So let's take the epithelium on the surface of the tongue. That needs to be regenerated a lot, because every time that um, tongue cells get rubbed up against by something you're chewing or, or you know, eating, you're going to need to replace those. Same with the epidermis, the outer parts of your skin. I'm getting rid of thousands right now by doing this. So yeah, you do need to regenerate them as they get damaged. So those are some characteristics of epithelial tissues in general.